so Colette, which is the new film by Wash Westmoreland, who um, with uh, Richard Glatzer had made films like Still Alice. I think Julianne Moore came on the show to talk about Still Alice, is mm -hmm. that right? And uh, Quintanera right. and uh, The Last of Robin Hood. And this origin, this is a, a, um, a sort of biopic of the early life of Colette, the uh, author and performer. It begins uh, in the 1890s when the young uh, Sidonia Gabriel Colette is being courted by this uh, literary entrepreneur, Henri Gautier Villard, who calls himself Willie. That's the name he's known by, by virtually everybody, played by Dominic West. And uh, he's, he basically woos her and takes her to a, a new life in Paris, which she's you know, initially completely astonished by because there are all these you know, parties and social stuff going on. It's also very exciting. But very quickly, she realises that uh, her husband's uh, talent is nothing like as, uh, as uh, basically his expense and his expenditure outstrips his talent. And it turns out that what he actually does is he has a stable of people writing pseudonymously. Uh, under So he's, produ he's publishing these books under the name of Willie, but these books are written by a number of people, all of whom are kind of roped in to, you know, to write the books. But money is running out. He spends too much, you know, in restaurants and the rest of it. He is also um, uh, a Lothario. He's somebody who is, fidelity is not a word that appears to be in his lexicon. And he suggests to uh, to Colette that she she should actually start writing stuff pseudonymously for him, and she she doesn't want to. Read. He says, "Yeah, what are those 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 school stories that you told me? You can write them." So he basically forces her to write at the beginning, and in fact, there is one bit later on when when her writing starts to do very well that he literally locks her in a room to write, and the books that she writes suddenly become hugely successful. But of course, he is the person taking the credit for it. So. She's in this really strange position where she's writing this extraordinary stuff. It's really striking a nerve, particularly, it turns out, with the young women readers. And he is the celebrated toast of the town because she is not getting the recognition that she deserves for what she's doing. Is something wrong? Oh, what, what do you think is wrong? What? Finally, we have a success, and then you imply that I'm not the true author of it. No, I didn't. We're holding dynamite here. We've created something really powerful, and if it goes off at the wrong time, then it could blow our bloody heads off. Ollendorf is your publisher, Willie. Yeah, well, Schwab also said something. Schwab is part of the factory. People love to talk. They praise it to your face, and then the moment you turn around, there's knives in your back. I understand the mentality here. You don't. Well, I understand it well enough to write a book that's a toast of Paris. And then what happens is that her horizons start to expand. She starts realising that, you know, the marriage itself is rather stifling and her husband is off philandering. And she starts developing relationships, firstly with a socialite belle called Georgie, played by Ellen Tomlinson, and then with Missy, who is played by Denise Goff. And as this happens, she is encouraged to sort of to find her own voice, to find her own identity, to stake her own claim on what is rightfully hers. Um, I really enjoyed the film for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, it ties in thematically to a number of things which Westmoreland and previously with Richard Glatzer had done in movies like, I mean, Still Alice is a film about somebody losing their identity. You know, there's that moment in Still Alice in which the Julianne Moore character says, some days I find it hard to find myself. You know, I, I, can't, I can't find who I am. And this is a story about somebody whose identity has basically been taken away from them, that somebody else is using their voice and selling their voice. And, you know, it's interesting, particularly if we think about this in relationship to a film like The Wife, for which Glenn Close is now getting you know, great accolades. And there is, a, there is a sort of thematic similarity there. Um, you know, a woman who is very talented, and but a husband who is very, very celebrated in the dynamic that's that, that, you know, that's working there. And, I mean, also, there is a comparison with uh, Mary Shelley, the recent movie of Mary Shelley, when, again, it's a writer who is being overshadowed by her more celebrated partner. Um, so, firstly, there's that thing about finding your identity, which I think is there in Still Alice. If you look at something like Last of Robin Hood, I mean, that's a film which is dealing with celebrity. And this is also about the creation of celebrity, about what it means when you create a persona, uh, an idea of a, you know, it's somehow... Uh, Willie is a brand name. He actually describes it as a brand name rather than a person. He says, it's not that I'm using your work, it's that it's a brand name. We all work together under this umbrella, despite the fact that he's the he's the front of it. So it becomes a discussion about what celebrity means and what celebrity culture means. And suddenly, 
everyone who's clicking into these Claudine novels is there's Claudine soap and there's Claudine hats and there's a Claudine way of dressing. And then then the movie starts moving into theatrical production. which actually, in a way, becomes almost the most interesting part of it because it becomes a film about, um, about life as performance. There are these theatrical productions that are seen as quite scandalous by some people and by others as kind of almost pantomime. And at that point, the film, which up until then has taken a lot of its visual references from the French films of Max Ophel starts looking a little bit like a kind of like that kind of Fellini carnivalesque thing. And at the centre of it, you have, a, a, you know, a really, really uh, a well cast production. I think Kira Knightley is very, very good in the in, in the lead role, because what she manages to do is to firstly give you that sense of somebody who is very, very at the beginning. She's, you know, charismatic and smart and sharp, but somebody who hasn't publicly found her voice although she's been fighting her own her own battles but then as the whole thing kind of mushrooms and as the as the public attention comes it becomes about what it means to be in the public gaze or to be out of the public gaze to be accepted to be seen as but from the outside world as something and to actually be that or not to be it. I think she does it really well. It's a really sharp performance. I was talking before about how funny she is in um, The Nutcracker and The Four Realms or whatever that film is called, which I said the only thing about it I actually liked was I thought she was very funny. And she's got a very, a very good line in kind of just piercing that ca- that 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 character. Dominic West is terrific as uh, as as Willie, who is you know arrogant and vain, and yet also you know stupid like very insecure, but his insecurities are demonstrated by him being sort of bullish and, you know, I said, fantastically arrogant. And the whole, the film's shot in the UK and in uh, and in Prague, um, I think, and it's, it's, it's not France, it's not Paris. You know, I think there's a couple of establishing shots are in France. But it, they really do that thing about getting the period detail right. I mean, we're talking about Stan and Ollie. It's interesting that, you know, you have to believe that you were looking at 1950s England and... You, you, very rarely when people are sort of doing film reviews do they talk about how well the production design is done. The fact is the production design and Colette is very, very well done, as is the costume design and Colette, that you do believe that you are looking at this, uh, what they call it, fantasy Eckler world, and you believe that those characters are in that world, absolutely. And the other thing I like about it is it's a kind of, you know, it's a, it's a story which is, you know, a historical story, but it has a very modern edge to it. It's a story that feels like a story about somebody about a woman finding her own voice. It's a story about characters who challenge uh, gender, uh, you know, g- gender boundaries. It is a it's it's a story absolutely about people saying, I, you know, I, I won't conform to this stereotype. I won't conform to that stereotype. It's a film in which it is very smartly cast all the way down through the production, very knowingly cast. And uh, yeah, I, I I thought it was it's really terrific. And again, I've I've seen it twice, and the second time round, I. I thought, you know, I, I enjoyed it even more, and not least because I think, I think Wash Westmoreland has is a he's been sort of telling a version of this story. Incidentally, the first version of this script dates back fifteen years or so, um, and it's like a, a number of things from his career, which I have been, of which I have been a great admirer, come together in Colette.